a friend of mine told me that money is in the debt. Do you believe in that? Yes, I do. Why do you think so? That the money is in the debt? Because it's where the, all the riches are. Mm. Yeah, and everyone doesn't want to go into debt. Why everyone does not want to go into the debt? Mm, they don't. They don't want something. They want some easy life. They don't want to be stressed. Who, who are the people that want easy life? Young people, most especially. Young people. Yeah. You, you're trying to tell us that we, we as young people, need to come and do farming. Of course, yes. Definitely. Bro, is everything okay with you? <laughs> it's mm? okay. Why should you go to school and at the end of the day, we become farmers? Yeah. Mm? Uh, well, so even farming is for even for educated people. Welcome to Rwanda, Africa's cleanest country, my favorite country in Africa. When Mastercard Foundation reached out to me to attend Baobao Bao Summit 2022 in Rwanda, which is a decade of impact across the world, I couldn't say no. You know why? Because it was a chance for me to go back to Rwanda. <laughs> Ultimately, the aim of this foundation aligns with the work that I do. I mean, changing and impacting lives and also empowering young people in Africa through founding. If I say founding, MasterCard Foundation, if you have a business idea, they come through for you to fund you so that your dream will actually come to pass. When you want to go to university, MasterCard Foundation also comes through for you. And I was so amazed to see the number of lives that this foundation has touched across Africa. And I had to put some light on it. But before I do that, let me tell you a bit of what happened at the summit. At the summit, the scholars, the alumni and partners came together to connect, recreate, share, learn and reflect. Cameroon, yay! <laughs> We're representing. I have to share this incredible story with you all. But do me a favor, like this video, subscribe and be part of this awesome channel. And you know what you need to do for me? Be a farmer today. It's my first time planting onions. I've been, I've been, I've been enjoying onions all my life. And now, it's a pity when that... You're, when you're eating them, you know. Uh, uh, please. Oh, no, well, when you're harvesting this, give it to me. <laughs> I just want this one. I, I want people to know that this is how I planted this one, man. How many for educated peop people? Yeah. Which part of Africa did you grow up from? Here yeah, in Rwanda. In Rwanda? Yeah. So in, in Rwanda, educated people do farming? Yes, they do. Where I was born, yeah? Mm -hmm. Farming is for the poor. Uh, then if you keep that mindset, poverty and hunger will keep, uh, will keep facing poverty and hunger. Wow. Yeah. My name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana who is on a journey to change the negative narrative of Africa. And I'm here because I heard your story from MasterCard Foundation. And that's why I'm here today. Tell me who you are and what do you do? Uh, thank you so much. My name is Norman and I'm the founder of uh, Free Farmers Market and also Yab. A free Farmers Market, we're trying to help uh, rural farmers access the market for their produce without moving kilometers and kilometers carrying the fresh produce on the head, but selling on the farm at a fair price. And the Yab, we are trying at Yab, it's an NGO. We're trying to engage young people to love agriculture, to look at the opportunities and tap the opportunities in agriculture and how they can overcome unemployment. You know, as we young people, anything that is not sexy, we are not interested in it. Even when you want to marry a woman, you need to make sure the woman is sexy. So that's why most of us don't like agriculture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how are you making agriculture so sexy for young Africans to involve themselves in it? Uh, what I'm doing is to show them that agriculture is not holding the whole and spending how many hours in the, in the, in the, in the farm. This but guy, you can do different things. This guy is just insulting me. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it's all right. No, no. But there are more, yeah, more into. All about, but I, I'm Yeah, there are more opportunities. Like maybe young people don't know. 
uh, adding value, growing uh, in in a greenhouse like this, hmm. where you don't even actually need to depend on, on on rain season. Like it's more like this is actually you don't even have go in the village. You can have this one at, in, in the city and grow food and feed the future. And also there's more value addition. There's logistics. There's marketing. There's a lot of the of things that are opportunities that are in agriculture for young people. You were born in Rwanda? Uh, I was actually born in Uganda. Uganda? Yeah. Raised in, in Rwanda? Yes. Wow. And um, you lived here all your life? Yeah, yeah. You never left the country to live abroad? I went for, for, my, my, for my studies, for my bachelor's and, and, and master's. Which countries did you go to? Uh, for my bachelor's, I went to, uh, I went to Costa Rica at Art University uh, with the um, MasterCard Foundation Scholarship. And then for my master's, I went to China with uh, and Tsinghua University with Schwarzman Scholars Program. Uh, oh, you speak Chinese? It would be Ni Hao. Ni Hao Ma. Ni Hao Ma. had opportunity to study abroad. Yes. And after school, you also had opportunity to live in the country. Yes. Why did you come back? I mean, I have so many young Africans and they're asking me, is this brother okay? I mean, abroad is the future, the West is the future. Why you got opportunity and decide to come back home? Uh, well, when I reached abroad, I looked at how, actually, they're looking at agriculture and the opportunities which are there and the skills I've gained and I hope that how can I bring back the skills? How can I give back to my community? How can I come bring the skills and support the people and the challenges that we are facing? Mostly, which is an employment among young people, which is hunger and poverty in rural communities. And I decided let me bring back the skills so that I can give an impact to the community where I come from. Does that mean that personally you don't have a farm? No, for me I don't have a farm. But I support Dude. other young people to have farms. How do you support other young people to have a farm? First of all, we teach them how to start uh, farming, uh, like doing it in a professional way as a business. Uh, we give them like a training, like a capacity building program. Hmm. And then from there, we give them access to finance, like in, to buy inputs, like fertilizer, like seeds. And then they can have the investment starting. And then after the harvest, and then where Afri Farmers comes in, using technology, set their produce at the farm. You're actually doing agriculture in a different way. Is it lucrative what you're doing? Yeah, it is, it is creative. And that's why the question you asked me is on agriculture, why like, the opportunities in agriculture are those? That's all an opportunity. I'm a farmer, but I don't, I don't have all the hope to go in the farm. But I'm a farmer. And I'm supporting wow. others. So if they could be more in other country, in other community, in another community, that's how... How many people are you supporting right now? Right now, more than, uh, more than 5,000 local farmers in Rwanda. 5,000 local farmers, mm -hmm. do you fund them too? Uh, through different ways, like those in groups, uh, we give them like inputs okay. uh, and, and well, training. What, what, what kind of inputs you're talking about? But the inputs are farm inputs like fertilizers, like, like improved seeds, uh, pesticides. So they get them on credit okay. and after they harvest, then they can pay back the credit. So that money can go back to support other new farmers. That's impressive, man. Mm -hmm. So with the 5,000 local farmers that you have, what will you say, like in terms of um, acres, have you ever calculated it? How many acres of um, land you Some like in hectares, like maybe like this, where we are right now, it's yeah. more than five hectares. And actually this, the good thing why we're actually on this farm, this is the group we started with in 2020. Okay. The a group of young people, there were part of them. We asked them from the local leaders and they were unemployed in the community. And we gave, showed them a small piece of land here start with we give them the inputs at the beginning they started growing and learning how to grow in a sustainable way and from there within the period of two years they have been able to raise the income to build their own greenhouses wow. so starting with an investment of i remember we started with only 300 dollars but now they're harvesting more than almost 10, 10 million per three months within a season of three months here in this land a genius man Do you 
know the, something good about uh, about, about farming? What is it? Do you know like here, only here, like the, the small space we have right now, this yeah. one for onions, the investment was not more than uh, $50. What? But they are expecting to get more than two hundred dollars. It's just within this small piece of land. Small piece of land. Mm -hmm. That's real great business. And, 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 and how long is this gonna to take to be harvested? Uh, around four, 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 five months. Four, four five months. Mm -hmm. What do you guys get water from? Uh, it's here. But uh, there is a water here running. But as you can see up there, we are putting irrigation system. Yeah. You see that going? So that will be the water reservoir on top. Then it will move by, by gravity. Then here will all be for the uh, irrigation. But we have other sources of irrigation. They can see there's a tank there. So we set up everything. That irrigation is for the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Those days, they never knew anything about greenhouse. Yeah. So you taught them? Yes, yes. That's and they're able to even start building their own so just, wow. now they can have uh, during the dry season they don't want to now depend on dry season tell I'm me good. how was life when you were growing up i grew up like in the similar uh, conditions we actually had to drop out of school at one point and wow. to make sure i had to find well how i can get money raise money take back to school and I think education has saved my life, has put opportunities in, and then I want to use those opportunities also to give back. I know there will be somebody, a young person like me, going through what I was going through when I was growing up. And how can I motivate him? And the only way I can give back is to share the skills and share the knowledge and say, hey, you can make it. I was here and I've been be able to reach this side and you can do it. And this, uh, these are the resources. I, I want to know, so you mean it's possible to make it in Africa? Oh. Actually, yeah, for me, I believe it's in Africa, it's where you can make it possible. If I now I go in the U.S., what would I do? Apart from maybe get a job and work there, I can't be, you know, what innovation would I bring? But here it's where we need more innovations. As you can still right now, these are the opportunities. Now we are using our hands and more opportunities if you can use the machine to do this instead of having 10 or 15 people doing this, just one person, those, those are opportunities. Are you looking forward for a partnership so that they can improve in terms of the equipment that you use? Yes, yes, of course, yes. Yo, um, you know, let's do this, man. I think this young man is doing something creative that I think he needs our support. If you're a business partner or a businessman out there and you really want to partner with him, feel free. I'm going to put his email in the description box. If you are from Rwanda, you have the resources to help them expand the farm. Just let me know, uh, please. Because I think people like him, I mean, they got the vision, they got the ideas, but sometimes funding is not there, right? Yeah. Will you say that that is the main challenge facing your farm? Though? Yeah, facing yeah. Your like, I'm also telling people like, hey, I'm in agriculture, like, ah, agriculture, are you able to, if I invest in my money, can I get it back? Like, mm. that's the big, big challenge. Mm. But we want to change that narrative that, yes, we can invest in agriculture. And this is the future. Agriculture is the backbone of our continent. So if you are not taking care of the backbone of the continent, what else can we, what should we be working on? And I encourage young people, please, 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 take agriculture as the best solution, as the best option for you to generate income. Instead of working for, you know, think of investing in agriculture. Think, just try and see how it goes. After school, did you get a job? Yes, I got a job in California, but I had to leave it and start come and... Dude, are you kidding me? Yeah, yes, yes. You got a job in California mm -hmm. and decided to let it go. Yeah. Why? I just wanted to really follow my passion. I want. I felt like the time I've been spending there working in the company, which I had, then I was like, if I spend that time, I can work on my own things that I'm more passionate about, and I can impact more more people. And you can see. So for you, it's all about impact. L let me tell you something. I, I feel like life is not all about income, because if you have a passion for something, you will definitely make an impact. And when you make an impact, that is when you make an income. Yeah. Right. There is there is someone who told me like if you want to be successful, mm -hmm. focus on people. Wow. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do and because they know if they're successful, if they can grow these onions, they can generate some income, they will sustain their they meet yeah. their daily basic needs and also how we can develop the community. Oh, 
I want to know is the current government of Rwanda supporting um, young farmers? Any pro any program to support young farmers? Yeah, there are many. There's called Riaf that is supporting young people. There are even some funds that are supporting young people in agriculture. There are many millions of opportunities for them. But uh, the young the question is, are young people ready to grab those opportunities? Are you ready to grab those opportunities? And all those opportunities are from Rwandese or young Africans? Yeah, across, of course, across, across, across the continent. I know there are others, maybe different, but right now with the experience I have, which is in Rwanda, where they're engaging young people, like even the Forum for Young People in Agriculture and everything. Like right now, what I was telling you, for this land where we are right now, mm. it's a land of five hectares for a group of, the, of 30, cooperative, uh, 30 members in a cooperative. And this land, actually, they don't rent this land. This land was given them by the government. Wow. With the local leaders. Yeah, they gave them to use it to grow their crops. And for us, what we did is to give them the skills how to utilize this land. So if there's opportunity like this, and there are more opportunities, I'm, I'm sure, across the continent, so young people should. So grow. you said when they harvest, mm -hmm. they bring it to you, right? We come here to pick. I so think. You come here to pick? Yeah, so, so I think when you're coming, you saw our truck, and even actually from here, you're going to see there is another way the other side for the final part we're going to visit. You see how they collect. But normally after harvesting, now it's a planting season. The truck comes here, they measure. After measuring, we pay them at the farm. But before that, they have also another, uh, uh, but those like a group representative. How we're using the offline platform, the USSD code, send the, plat uh, send the, the harvest. They say, hey, I'm farmer so and so. We are here in this place and we have this harvest that will be harvested within the next two days, three days. Then for us, we'll coordinate the pickup, uh, the pickup time. I've seen that they are just cultivating in here. Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere they are harvesting at the moment? Yeah, after here, we're going to see the harvest. Can we go check it out? Yep. So where are we right now? Uh, this is like a, a harvest, harvest collection center. Okay. So you, know, you can see the houses, the garden, and some of them are this side, others are the other side. So here they come, bring, and so they sell from here instead. Wow. Yeah. Before starting working with them, they had to walk like then almost all, almost away to Kigadi, which is more than 20 kilometers from here and carrying that fresh produce on the head but so now they're selling if from. i may understand what you really do it's more like you're a broker between the farmers and the consumers yeah it's like connecting have that linkage because we have now from here for them they send the harvest we come and pick it then we use the e-commerce platform people just order that fresh produce there and we deliver it their doorstep you know what you've done mm. you see without you probably this might spot in a few days yeah Actually, before they used to lose up to 40% of their produce on the farm. Yeah. Are they weighing it? Yeah, they weigh. And so we. Yeah. 22 kg. Yeah. This is 20. No, wait, don't add your hand. You can't cheat them, man. <laughs> so this is, so it, it's 24, eh? It's 24, right? Ah, I was trying to help you. <laughs> I pulled it down a bit. Yeah. So, so which means that you, you buy according to the cage? Yes, yes, according to the cage. Potato. This is uh, cassava. Ah, cassava. Yeah. You know, since there is cassava here, which means I can stay in this country. Yeah. You know why? Mm. Because in my country, I eat fufu. You know fufu? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know fufu. Yeah, we use, you guys have plantain, right? Yes, uh, you know, not much yet, we have it. See, I, I'm not coming back to Ghana, man. Mm -hmm. They have cassava, they have plantain, they have tomatoes. They have yeah. pilipili? Yeah, we do. Pili -pili? Yes. Ha! Do. Can make... You have kako? Kako, what is... Uh... They don't have kako. <laughs> Maybe that's we what, have, but I don't know. That's a little missing. <laughs> yeah, so now they're going to pack it into the car. Yeah, yeah, they're now going to pack in here, then... Where well, they measure, we pay them, then yeah, pay them right here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So everybody will be a billionaire today. Hi. Okay. Can I talk to her? Yes. 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 I really want to know the 
system that he brought has it actually added value to your producing here? Jara the fashion she chani kubera yuko yoto vya hano. She's saying like the system really helps them very well. If it wasn't them, they have to wake up at nine at three a.m. to go to the market so they can reach the early morning. And going and coming back, they lose a lot and. So it's so painful. It's, it's a lot of work for them. Did they used to um, lose a lot of their uh, produce? They're saying before that they have the carry. She can cut. Now imagine she has already harvested five, and she can only carry one or two. Or she has to take the whole family, the dad and the mom, to go to the market, and no one is even there. And because even by the time they walk with this, and by the time they reach there, even the quality. Is it now profitable for you? Vitangu msaaruro chani kura kivi na gonsora na kona gonjenda ni koreye. Now they, they, it is more profitable because there is no there is no money wasted. She doesn't waste her time to go to the farm to walk all that distance, and selling here gives her time also to do other businesses. What will you say to him? The farmers eh, they chana ibgira no mushinga misa chani. She's very very grateful for the opportunity. They no longer have to have that pain of going to the market, losing their produce. And even uh, apart from that, even the skills they gain, the ones we give them, that help them to transform and think about this one as they go the business. Murakose. Murakose, I added one more, eh? <laughs> yeah, just for your hard work. When you hear the name Africa, mm -hmm. what comes into your mind? Uh, the possibilities, the opportunities that have not been utilized mm -hmm. yet. And why do you think we've not utilized opportunities that we have on the continent? Uh, first of all, there are two. Like the name they have shaped Africa to be, uh, you know, when you think of Africa, poverty, all those, but we don't talk about opportunities. We don't talk about the beautiful nature that we have and the top opportunities that are there that we can look into and young people can engage in and develop our continent. Do you believe Africa runs the world? Of course, 100%. If we run the world, mm -hmm. what do you think is the major problem of the continent? The problem, uh, first of all, is that name they have shaped us, the Africa to be. You know, and the other thing is to have to really have more strategic leaders. We have leaders, that, but we need more leaders in different parts of the of the, of the continent that are more strategic, that are more uh, developing ideas that help the people, leaders of the people. Because I do everything stands and falls on leadership. So if you have the right leaders, like in Rwanda, if you could have another more president in another country who is like our president, in that would be really perfect. It seems you're so proud of your president. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, how proud I are you am. about your president? Tell me. <laughs> Maybe 200%. <laughs> Out of 100. No, no, no. Yeah. Tell me what he has done that makes you feel so proud of him. I want you to take back a little bit. Yeah. Like, 19, like during the 1994 Rwanda genocide against Tutsi. If you looked at the Rwanda at that time and look at the Rwanda we have right now, if it wasn't our president, if it wasn't our leader, wouldn't be the country now that is on top. So bringing all, like now you can see people working together and all those, the unity, the transformation, the level of development is because we had a vision leader. If it wasn't him, I don't know. I don't think we would be here where we are. And that's why me getting the opportunity to study and all that, and that's why it motivates me to come and so play my role play my part because I know whatever idea I have I'm going to do is going to work out. If it wasn't that then I would have maybe stayed there like I'm not coming because another idea won't work out. But right now it's working out because of the good governance. There's so many youths living in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a message for them, what would that message be? I'll come back invest in your, in, your, in, your, in your communities. They should come and bring those knowledge, those, the skills, the resources they have to invest in their countries. As a Rwandan, I think you just praised your president. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think the people of Rwanda can do to help the vision of the current leader? Oh, there is always where we want to go. There is a 
there is a where, the direction where we're going, and there is the why we are doing that and why we don't want to go there. So the president is that the, the giving us that direction. But the why is the people, why we should do that one. So I think like every Rwandan should embark on the vision and the ideas and work. If you are a government official and you are working for that, make sure you work the maximum, deliver to the people. So if you have a leader, vision leader and is doing everything, but the system down, the people are not working so hard, it will be hard to reach that development. It will be hard to reach that vision. But if we work together, everyone and everyone investing and everyone, whatever opportunity is available, whatever challenge you're seeing and it turn into a possibility, we can go there. We what are the kind of opportunities do you think they have in Rwanda that other Africans can come and invest in here? Uh, of course, there's agriculture, there's uh, yeah, digital skills that we can in, in come in and there are more so like uh, natural resources that we have. We have a lot, a lot of opportunities that people can come and, 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 and invest in and work and, you know, even expand. I think Afri Rwanda should be a startup nation for the African continent. That's what uh, I'm thinking. Was farming your passion or it just come along the way? This was my passion because that's what I actually studied at my undergraduate and oh. I wanted to get this. Yeah, that has been my passion. If it wasn't passion, I do believe that passion drives the purpose. So if it wasn't passion, I wouldn't be doing this.